Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's taken a long time to arrive at this decision, but I think my usage of my current, or my only Fujifilm camera at the moment, the Fujifilm X-E1, has slowly been diminishing over the last few months. And it did have a little bit of a reprieve whilst my Sony A9 that I bought was off being repaired. But since that's come back, and again, some things have happened where I no longer have the Sony, I've now got a, another camera which I'm trying. But I think what's been certain to me is that I feel like I've come to the end of wanting to use the Fujifilm X-E1. So as well as being probably my last video on my experiences with Fujifilm, it's also gonna be a bit of an update as well about my experiences with the XE1 and of course the 35mm f1.4 and this pretty much marks the only thing I have left with regards to Fujifilm gear. I've got a couple manual focus type adapters as well if I want to use like vintage lenses with the camera but predominantly if I have used the Fujifilm camera in the past it's generally this combination that I've used partly because it's like I said it's the only Fujifilm gear I have left. So I've been using Fujifilm cameras for over three years now this is certainly been the most used camera like I originally bought the Fujifilm X100 which I regrettably sold for less than £200 a few years ago now like I've recently looked about just picking one of those up again and it's just crazy the amount of money that, that they're going for at the moment well, well over double what I sold mine for so I certainly won't be looking to go down memory lane again with that camera in the near future and as well as the X100 I then picked up this camera and because I preferred at the time the output of this camera I sold the X100 like I said regrettably I then tried the X Pro 1 as well but then hung on to the XE1 because there were some aspects of the XE1 that I just thought was better I think from my re recollection I found the EVF to be a bit better quality a bit less laggy and just generally I found the performance to be a little bit better with the XE1 over the X Pro 1. I then wanted to see whether I could get a more modern advanced Fujifilm camera with the view of potentially taking over my Olympus gear. So I picked up the Fujifilm X-H1, which whilst I did like using that camera, certainly the EVF was probably the best EVF that I've, I've ever used, although it was a little bit laggy, I found, compared to my other cameras. But on the whole, I, I really enjoyed using the X-H1. I wasn't a massive fan of its size, its weight. I didn't particularly find the IBIS to, that, to be that good. And as I compared the images to the X-E1, I did still prefer overall the image quality that came out of these original X-Trans1 sensor cameras. So the Fujifilm X-H1 was sold and then I just stuck with the X-E1. I recently bought a Sony A9 and this camera survived a purge of gear that I used to raise some money and to clear some space for that Sony system. So that resulted in me selling all my other gear for the Fujifilm. So I sold a 15 to 45 zoom lens, the 50 to 230. But then, like I said, this camera and this lens survived that purge back then. The reason I don't pick up this combination so much anymore is because this lens here, the 35mm f1.4, which is a brilliant lens, I do tend to find it's a little bit on the tight side. And I can see why Fujifilm have since released a 33 millimeter lens because that's probably more closer to a traditional nifty 50 type focal length range and it's probably yeah i do find when i'm out just just using it on a general walk that it is quite tight for just general photography it's absolutely fine for like some scenarios so if you're doing like portraiture etc but I do find for just a general walkabout lens, it is a little bit on the tight size. And I think certainly with the Canon RF, I'm probably gonna go for a 40 mil prime 
at some point because I do tend to prefer slightly tighter than 35 mil but a little bit wider than 50 mil is a good general use type range for a walkabout prime. So I've certainly got my eye on the moment with the Voigtlander 40 mil f1.2. If I trade in this combination that might allow me to afford potentially my first native RF lens, albeit it's a, it's a manual focus lens. Again, I'm hoping that 40 mil f1.2 might keep me away from medium format for a little bit longer because from the images I've seen, it does provide that pseudo medium format look in terms of achieving greater separation between your subject and your background. I think the, the wireless aperture I've got for the full frame camera at the moment is probably about 1.7, 1.8. So I think uh, 1.2 is a good, a good stop wider, if not, if not more. So yeah, it's, it's a big expense, but I think in terms of creativity and fun, it's definitely gonna be, be worth it. I certainly feel like the Ricoh GR was probably the final nail in the coffin for this combination. I just love that camera. It just it just fits in anywhere. It's so light and the sharpness from that that lens, the 28mm f2.8 lens is just um, unbelievable. And it's great with the Ricoh as well. Okay, you lose a little bit of resolution, but it does have those crop modes, which is great to uh, to help with your composition of your shot. So you've got 28 millimeter lens, you can then punch into 35 and to 47 if you need to. And I'm probably sure over time, I'm probably gonna to upgrade to a newer Ricoh GR with more megapixels so that when you do punch into those crop focal lengths, you, you retain a bit more resolution. But at the moment, I'm happy with the original Ricoh GR, which was released over 10 years ago now. So very, very close actually to the release date of the XE1. There are some things that I will, I will miss. Um, the list isn't as big as it probably used to be, but there are still some aspects that I, that I enjoy about shooting Fujifilm. Definitely the, the dials and the aperture ring on the lenses. I do feel it just helps you connect a little bit more with for photography. It just feels a more purer, raw experience rather than a camera that does away with all that and you're just generally just using the, the shutter to and dials to s select your settings rather than being able to actually see what settings you've dialed into the camera. Um, as this is the original Ektrans 1 sensor camera and this is the magical 35mm f1.4, sometimes when the conditions are right it does produce some truly magical images that make you kind of pause for effect in terms of thinking oh maybe actually I will keep this in my collection for a little while longer and I think um, what's been the turning point for me is obviously over the last few months I've taken this out alongside the Ricoh which is another APS-C size sensor camera along with also as well the the Canon 5D and the R8 which which although they're full frame so you can't really do a like for like comparison to me it's all about how how the cameras render a scene and whether I like the the, the colors and generally I haven't found that this combination has won me over as much as it probably did previously when I had more micro four thirds cameras in my collection. So I was probably more bowled over by how much more subject separation and lower noise you could get with these cameras. But obviously now that I ventured into full frame, I can start to see the benefits of having a full frame camera. I've also enjoyed the, uh, the size and simplicity of this camera, like up until the Ricoh GR, this was probably one of my lightest uh, camera and lens combinations in my collection, probably bar the EM1 and the 20mm f1.7, but I still probably think that is heavier than this combination here. So what other things have convinced me that now might be the time to move away from Fujifilm? I know there's ways around it and 
certainly with like the enhanced function in Lightroom and Iridium X Transformer and other software out there. But I do find that I don't tend to like the mushiness you get from the X-Trans sensor, certainly when you're shooting with a lot of green foliage in a particular scene, you just lose that detail on the edge. And I know, like I said, you can use like the enhanced feature in Lightroom to, to try and pull that, pull that back. I just, yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of the extra step in my workflow. I'm also as well, not a massive fan with the way that the X-Trans one sensor camera renders greens and blues i feel they look to me to my eyes a little bit garish and horrible at times and um yeah i'm just i'm just not a fan i don't think of the x-trans sensor and just talking about the xe1 i've already mentioned the the small evf and um another limiting factor with the xe1 is its limited shutter speed to one four thousandth of a second so when you're trying to shoot wide open with a 35 mil f1.4 sometimes you have to use the exposure compensation to help you to take a scene and obviously then it might have an impact on how you edit that image in post and i know again you can attach sorry i'm looking down to see where i'm being bitten flies like me uh, i know you can attach a, a variable nd filter to counteract that effect but I just don't always have one to hand and sometimes it's it is actually bright in the UK so it is nice sometimes just to shoot wide open so yeah that is a I do find quite quite limiting the RA isn't brilliant in that regards like it's um first curtain shutter I think so it hasn't got a true mechanical shutter but one option is limited to one four thousand one four thousandth of a second shutter but you can switch to its electronic shutter to get around that limitation whereas obviously this doesn't have an electronic shutter it's just purely mechanical and again about the x-trans sensor i do generally on the whole compared to my other file types find it quite difficult to edit to get the images to where i like it i like in lightroom that you can choose the film simulations to to just to come up with a a reasonable starting position but still on the whole i find editing xtrans sensor files more difficult than more conventional bayer type sensor cameras in my collection and i've recently done a review of all my images as well trying to purge some images in my collection and looking back at the ones i've taken with the fujifilm they don't generally appear that high up in my rankings you know in terms of when you rate your images four or five stars that they, they, they haven't really received that highest rating in my collection compared to images that i've taken with other cameras so i certainly feel that now is the time to end my journey with fujifilm but, but certainly, if funds allowed in the future, I would certainly look at the GFX line of Fujifilm cameras, just purely because they don't use the X-Trans sensor, so that eliminates a lot of my bugbears with their APS-C sensor cameras. And um, But I feel at the moment, with full frame, that's, that's more than enough camera um, for me at the moment. So I think that wraps up what I wanted to say about this at the moment like i have um denied over the last couple of weeks whether i should just just keep it you know prices are going up certainly for the the, the bodies you know like like i picked up this body three years ago for about 100 pounds i looked on um, mpb a couple of days ago and they're going for like three four hundred pounds so i'm certainly not going to lose any money on the body i'm probably going to lose a little bit of money on the lens because like i said fuji have bought out some newer lenses in that focal length and of course you've got some other third party options as well so i think what i'll do is i'll just run a montage now of my favorite images that i've captured on fujifilm cameras since i started this journey and um yeah and then wrap wrap this up thanks for watching bye for now